Welcome back to what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. I'm Vincent Lancey, speaker and author of the book, Left for Dead, A Story of Redemption. Want to know what it's really like to be an entrepreneur? Well, you came to the right place. Whether you're already an entrepreneur or looking to start your journey tomorrow or just someone who needs a little extra motivation to get through the day, this is the perfect podcast for you. This is the place where you will learn exactly what it's like in the world of entrepreneurship and hear authentic stories of entrepreneurs grinding on each episode. My goal for this podcast is to help you realize that giving up is never an option. If you missed the last episode, be sure to download it after you tune in today. Before I introduce my guest, I'll share another entrepreneurial story to inspire you all. I found an awesome article that highlights the 15 entrepreneurs to keep an eye out for in 2020. And I'll now introduce number one on that list, and Nabil Ahmed. Nabil began offering services as an independent marketing consultant while he was still a student in college. Like many entrepreneurs, he ended up dropping out to become a full-time entrepreneur and follow his dreams. He has now established multiple successful companies that are making a lasting impact in their fields, such as media, software development, and digital marketing. Now, Nabil leads a team of more than 100 people working remotely from different parts of the world. And I really like this article because in a world we're living now where so much of the business world is remote, I thought it was important to share. And his most successful venture was Vertibyte, which is a full-time digital marketing agency. And they partner with some of the world's biggest companies and offer world-class solutions for PR, digital marketing, branding, website development. Hey, Samir, what'd you like best about this entrepreneurial journey? Um, you know, I like the idea that he started at, at a super young age, um, starting in college, um, taking the risk to, to drop out, but just the idea of starting as young as possible, it's, that's a pretty, uh, pretty great way to, to kick off a career. Absolutely. Gaining as much knowledge as possible from as many people as possible is certainly goal. And that voice you all just heard is the sound of today's guest. My guest on the show today is someone I met through LinkedIn looking for valuable stories for you all. He's the co-founder and CEO of Knack, which helps students build the skills they need to be successful in the classroom in the 21st century workplace. Thought this was really cool, so I had to reach out to him. The, the uh, company allows you to connect with the community of your peers to learn and support from one another. They allow users to search their class, browse a list of the top tutors at their school, and they're able to request a session and get help. Um, I'd love to now introduce Samir Qureshi. Samir, I can't wait to hear this story, and thanks for joining the show. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. I consider myself a career student, so I had to learn exactly what went on in creating this company. So if you wouldn't mind just previewing your journey, your story before we hop into the questions today. Sure. Um, so uh, as mentioned, I'm co-founder and CEO of a company called Mac. We're based in Tampa, Florida. Uh, and we are a platform that helps students find peer tutors on their campus. Um, we started out as a direct-to-consumer platform that was used on 60 campuses. High-achieving students would sign up as tutors, uh, their peers, uh, as they need help, would book them for one-on-one -on -one and group services on campus. Uh, and then we would take a small cut from that tutoring session. Um, we grew that to about 60 campuses. And then um, over time, we started to have institutions directly reach out and say, hey, you're actually helping to move some, our mo some of our most important metrics like student retention and engagement and graduation rates. Um, so through that, we've actually switched the business model to where now institutions will pay for this as a resource for students to help drive student success. Um, we started and incorporated in 2015, launched a product in 2016 at the University of Florida, um, which is my alma mater. And we incorporated in Gainesville and then uh, after a couple of years, moved the company over to Tampa Bay, which is an area I grew up in, and um, you know we've now been supported by incredible investors like the owner of the Tampa Bay Lightning, Jeff Finnick, uh, as well as some other uh, pretty well-known uh, venture funds based in San Francisco and, and pretty much all across the, the country. Absolutely. The channel side area for everybody listening on that's not from Tampa, Jeff Finnick, among other investors, is redoing this entire area right by the Lightning Stadium. And uh, Florida founders as well down here in Tampa. A lot of entrepreneurial support out here. Absolutely. Yeah. Samir, let's get into the big five now. On each episode, my guests and I go over these five questions to help you, the listeners, learn what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. You ready to go, man? Let's do it. All right. 
When did you first realize that you either weren't happy with what you were doing or you just needed some form of change to truly start this entrepreneurial journey? Um, so I had graduated uh, UF a year early um, and went into the workforce. Uh, I worked at a, at a large market research firm uh, and it was, an, it was a great company, uh, great benefits, great upward mobility, um, but I was just not internally fulfilled. And I think I sort of understood that once I got to that corporate job, I kind of checked a box in my head and said, all right, well, corporate job's never going to go anywhere. So if I want to come back, I know I can. Um, and so at the time, I, I really sort of thought about it deeply and spoke to friends and family. And they said, hey, if you've ever thought about building something, best time to do is when you're young, right? You have uh, likely the least responsibilities you'll ever have. Uh, right. And I looked around, didn't didn't have any student debt, uh, you know, wasn't married, didn't have kids and realized that my opportunity to kind of give it a shot and, and fail fast was was best when I was young. So um, I lasted about nine months in corporate and uh, soon thereafter put in my two weeks and uh, was really sort of uh, intrigued with this idea of the sharing economy and the peer-to-peer -peer models. This was uh, roughly 2014. Okay. Uber and Airbnb were exploding. Um, and that idea of sort of using uh, latent assets of humans and, and their skills and their and their uh, sort of assets or belongings could be really interesting and, and education has been a huge part of my life sort of as a first generation uh, um, uh, immigrant coming to the States um, and so for me it was an interesting opportunity to sort of put some, some themes together and really build something that was important so that was sort of the story for me. That's a wonderful story it was great to learn all about that like I said I have very strong ties to the education community. It played a large part in my life after my transformative incident. But now that you're on this entrepreneurial journey, you never looked back since the corporate experience. What would you say one or two of the most difficult parts of being an entrepreneur? Are? Yeah, so um, I would say it's sort of um, continuing to, to keep going despite uh, maybe folks or even yourself uh, telling you that uh, they don't really believe in your idea. And so, um, you know, in the early days, it was, it was difficult to kind of keep our heads up and uh, our team was full of first time founders. So none of us had built businesses before we were all super young. Um, and so we were kind of, you know, every day was, was a crash course of, a, of an MBA. So, you know, we were learning everything on the fly. And a lot of times you'd look around at peers who have you know, Stanford MBAs or business school degrees, or, you know, we're able to score funding overnight. And you'd, you'd start to then wonder, what am I doing wrong? Or, or how come they're able to get it? And so, and I'm not. And so and I think it's really, really at the end of the day, it's, it's persistence, but, you know, everyone sort of says never give up and, and, and put your head down and keep working. But I think one of the things that we did to combat that was we built a really strong support network, um, not just locally, but across the country. So we found some of the best advisors and mentors for for our sort of business and really surrounded had them surround us with um with mentorship knowledge encouragement um, because they very much understood the grind and they understood that you know this this idea was also very important and so i think for us um what's been really helpful is that we work in an industry where we're truly changing people's lives on in two ways on one side we're giving a student a job on the other side we're providing access to, to on-demand academic assistance, which uh, for many folks can really help turn things around on both ends. We've had tutors say, you know, my family makes fifteen, twenty thousand dollars a year, and the earnings that I make on this platform really help to go support them. Um, that's really inspiring. And then on the flip side, students saying, I, I literally wouldn't be graduating without this product. So, you know, uh, I would say whenever I have a bad day, I, I just go talk to users and. And if they had a bad day, then I know it's really a bad day. But um, <laughs> but if they if they're happy and they love the product and they're coming back, then then that's really all that matters to me. And so, you know, that's kind of been our outlook. But it's it's something every entrepreneur goes through. You know, imposter right. syndrome, um, just sort of feeling like you've been on the grind for so long and aren't seeing results. But you know, you got to find something that you're passionate about. And I will say, education has been something our team is very passionate about, which has kept us going. Yeah, I agree with everything you said in the beginning. It's definitely difficult, especially when it's all trial and error. I myself well, had no experience running or creating a business. And now five, six years, you start to see some good things happen from it. How many people you have on your team, Samir? Um, there are 11 full-time, including myself. 
Wow. Okay. All based here in Tampa. That's right. Awesome. Awesome. What would you say one of your greatest failures or lesson learned is and why, what did it teach you? Why has it stuck with you till today? You know, I would say personally, it was, um, I sort of wish I valued um, some of the business skills I could have learned in college a little bit more. Absolutely. Um, so Let's talk I, about that. Yeah. So I, um, I was a pre-law student and, you know, my thought was I could always start a business if I want to. I don't necessarily need a, a business degree or an MBA. And that's very much true. I mean, I'm, I'm here today and, and we're working hard and making progress, but there are a lot of skills um, that, that you can learn. Um, and so you know, one of the things I did was I started a business in college. It was very much a sort of lifestyle business. It wasn't anything that was really, um, you know, something that I was uh, trying to grow into anything large, but I did learn a ton from that. And so I would say, you know, I wish I would have sort of started that younger and I wish I would have kept going with it because I think when I look back at what we're building now and, and what I built then, there's actually a lot of overlap. And so, um, you know, starting young, valuing the experience and the time and the relationships and skills you can build in college and not just sort of think about college as college, but think about it as an opportunity to truly set yourself up for, for long-term success. So I wouldn't say it's a failure. I would just say it was a learning that, that I think um, could have paid off even more had I been a little bit more diligent at that time. Couldn't agree more in the art of networking and cherishing that experience, just combining it all with the business is a skill in itself. But I'm interested to hear what you have to say about this one, just based on your business, maybe it will be completely different. But if you could choose to have a conversation and learn from any entrepreneur, now we're talking dead or alive, who would it be? Let's hear about it. Uh, probably Benjamin Franklin. Um, yeah, nice one. I think, yeah, he in many ways was obviously a master inventor, also just a, you know, a canonical example of a, of an OG entrepreneur in my mind. Um, I think he really, um, you know, especially for his time was, was thinking in a way that that was very unconventional and many, in many ways contrarian to the point where again, people really didn't believe that, uh, he, he would be able to overcome some of the, the issues he had at, at younger ages. And so there's a lot that, that I think he, uh, brought, uh, to the table from, from the side of an entrepreneur. And so, I would say him. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, of course, you know, there are other ones like Steve Jobs and Elon Musk and, and such, but when you said right. dead or alive, I gotta, gotta think back. And, and I think Benjamin Franklin was, a was, was definitely one I've, I've always sort of read about and looked up to. Absolutely. And, you know, people have a lot of excuses about why they can't accomplish certain things. But if you think back to Ben Franklin's times, not only we're we not even talking about having Google, we're talking about no one who set the road before him, no one to right. model off. It's like being an entrepreneur because it is. There's no blueprint. You got to just go out there. Like we spoke about trial and error. Absolutely. Yeah. So now that you've been going for about five years, you've said you have previous entrepreneurial experience. Will there be more? Let's look into the future. What do we see from your entrepreneurial endeavors in one year from today and five years today? So about Valentine's Day when we're recording this. 2021 what are we seeing from Samir yeah hopefully more growth um, we've had the largest um, growth in the last year we've ever had and so if I can you know sort of help lead my team and and lean on them for support to continue to to um, to make progress in a way that's that's impressive um, to ourselves to our stakeholders I think that would be awesome and so you know again for me it, it's been how do we keep moving forward, making progress in a way that's going to be um, fruitful to the overall growth of our business? Um, and so, you know, I, I think it would be awesome to to double or triple our customer count. Um, I also think, you know, five years from now, we may be in a place where, you know, we're not 10 employees, we're 50 or 70 or 100, and that would be incredible. That would be awesome. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of where we see ourselves. Um, our, our real goal is to be the go-to solution. Uh, to get help in college on every college campus. And yeah. so, you know, the idea of, of linking up with a peer with our platform being the vehicle uh, is, is what keeps us going every day. Absolutely. Are you guys over at University of Tampa? We're not. Uh, we're working with USF, um, but we're not, we're not at UT yet. Perhaps I can connect you somehow over there. I'd love to see it there, especially as a former student. I would have definitely utilized and certainly capitalized on this opportunity because 
it's such a unique it's a unique offering because of the high quality of the tutoring so thank you so much for everything i know our listeners see all the value in your story today i enjoyed how you started by talking about how you started the corporate dream like everybody else and you said while i'm young i'm going to take a risk i also enjoyed how you spoke about how it was not easy to keep your head up when funding was easier for people with the certain degrees or connections but you you powered through and now we're five years in so that's great stuff it's time for the last word samir is there something you want to share with our listeners that we didn't get to touch on today um you know i think despite what you may look like what folks may say about you the industry that you're in um you know the background you come from i think you'll always find an example of an entrepreneur who came from a similar background or was told the same things and was able to push through and and make it out on the other side. And I think the best thing you can do if you're starting out is to find a few of those folks and genuinely build a relationship and and see if they'd be willing to to sort of help you along the journey. And that doesn't just mean connections or capital, um, but that even means sort of, you know, um, tricks of the trade to to keep your head up and, and, and move fast. And so again, I didn't have a business degree. Um, You know, most, nobody in my family is really an entrepreneur. Um, and, and I was able to sort of get a start and I would encourage anyone to, if they've ever thought about it or had that feeling internally to take the leap because, you know, a nine to five will always be there. Um, but the best way to learn about yourself is to, to take a risk and, and jump in, jump into the deep end. And I think that's exactly what entrepreneurship does. I love it. Would you mind sharing your social media website or ways for any of our listeners to either request your services, follow your journey? Yeah, our website is joinnack.com, J-O-I-N-K-N-A-C-K.com. Um, and uh, that's our handle on, on Twitter, on Instagram. Uh, and then uh, for me personally, uh, my email is just Samir, S-A-M, like Mary, Y-R, at joinnack.com. Great. Thank you so much for sharing. And everybody, remember, you can check out the show on Instagram and Facebook at Your Favorite Morning Podcast and on Twitter at Podcasts by Lancey. My handles are at Vincent A. Lancy on all social media and YouTube, and my website is vincentalancy.com. Be sure to check out my book, Left for Dead, A Story of Redemption, on Amazon now, and DM me or email me. I want to hear what you think. If you enjoyed today's episode, please continue listening and rate what it's really like to be an entrepreneur five stars. I work hard to find value delivering stories for you on each episode. As always, I will end the show and follow the last word with a quote that inspired me and know it will for you too. This one from Reed Hoffman, co-founder of LinkedIn. He said, if you tune it so that you have a zero chance of failure, you usually also have zero chance of success. The key is to look at ways for when you get to your failure checkpoint and know when to stop. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you all in the next episode of what it's really like to be an entrepreneur.